Hello everyone. My name is Persis Karlström. I'm a two-time Olympian and multiple world medalist. And today I'm going to show you how to race walk. So race walking consists of just walking very, very fast. But in order to be able to walk fast, there's a couple of things that we need to control and think about. In race walking, we have two rules. One, and the most important one, is the straight knee rule. Uh, and especially for beginners, the straight knee rule is, is what everything is about. We don't need to focus on the second rule, which is the lifting rule. I'm only going to explain that very shortly. And basically, it's uh, the judges who are looking at us and, and judging the races. If they see a visible loss of contact of both feet in the air, then that's an infraction of the rules. But the, the straight knee rule is the important rule. So the straight knee rule is that when your leading foot touches the ground, so the heel touches the ground, your leg needs to be straight and it needs to be straight until it passes under your body in the stand phase. What most beginners have problems with or just don't uh, do is that they land and then they collapse like this and then they straighten again. So what we always want to think about and always want to do and focus on is that we land and then we really focus on, on tightening that quad muscle until the leg is in the neutral position below our body. And then we can just toe off. So to begin with, we want to have our arms in about a 90 degree angle. And then we will work like this. Obviously, we will coordinate with the legs. But we want to maintain about a 90 degree angle with the arms as we progress. Another thing to think about is that the hips are not going to be pushed side to side. Uh, so most people uh, think that we really use our hips and push them to the side, but we actually don't. Uh, we use them back and forth. So it's, it's basically just as you walk normally, and we're going to start by doing that as well. So we're going to walk normally. Then we're going to add the arms to the 90 degrees. Uh, and then we're just going to progress into a faster walk and a faster walk. Uh, and then naturally, if you walk normally, you will need to start using your arms to go faster. So that's, that's what we are going to do. And that's what I will show you as well uh, in the coming technique exercises. The first exercise will just be walking normally with a little bit longer strides. And then obviously we will think about the knee rule. So landing with a straight leg, we need to really enforce that quad muscle to work until we pass this under the body. So in these 11 exercises that I'm going to show you today, by the end you will hopefully be able to race walk uh, and have gotten an understanding on how the race walk motion is. And uh, what I do is I always use the track and I use the, the straights and uh, I use the lines. I will explain this more as well in the exercises. But basically always using the lane and we walk in towards the line or on the line. And uh, I do 100 meters of drill and then I come back and I do a race walk on the way back. And when I do the race walk, I really focus on what I felt in the drill. So it's always going to be focused on long strides. Uh, it's going to be focused on landing straight with the leg. It's going to be focused on really pushing back and feel the extension in the hip flexor. Uh, and then there's going to be some dynamic exercises and there's going to be some static exercises. So without further ado, let's move on to the technique and drills. So the first exercise is just I'm trying to take big steps and I'm just coordinating a bit with my arms uh, and then I'm walking in on towards the line.
and then I go back into a race walk motion again, walking on the line, try to have a good posture. I try to always reach for really, really big movements, really big arm motion, big leg motion, 100% stable. So this is the second exercise, just having my arms above the head, always walking in towards the line, and I try to be as stable with my upper body as I can, and just feel that leg extension, feel the stretching in the hips, in the hip flexors. It's the third one, with my arms in front of me, in these static exercises, the upper body remains still, and then I try to just drive the hip motion, have the knee extension, and just go for as long steps as I can, and always in towards the line. So the fourth exercise, it's just with my arms crossed in front of me, as I try to just feel that leg extension as long strides as I possibly can. And I try to work from the hips down and then just maintain my upper body as still as possible. So the fifth exercise, I have my arms crossed behind my back instead of in front of my body. And the same as always, try to be as still as possible in the upper body as I drive through with, with the legs and in on the line. The sixth exercise is with my arms out like a plane. I always go in a slow and controlled motion. There's no need to rush or try to do the movement fast because that's not the point of the exercises. But we always want to just maintain the posture and be very conscious of of our movements. So the seventh exercise, I just place my arms on the sides of my hips and uh, with the tip of my fingers I can really feel that hip move back and forward. I can feel the hip flexor really extend and you get a very good sense of, of the movements of your hips. In this eighth exercise, this one we started dynamic exercises. This one I just slightly touch my shoulder and then reach out in front as far as I can. At the same time as I obviously coordinate with my legs. So these dynamic exercises is all about coordination with your body, awareness, and you want to be as smooth as possible as you do the exercises. On this ninth exercise, I lock my hands and then I do 10 steps where I pull on the left side and then I change and I do 10 steps where I pull on the right side and then I go into just pulling on both sides to finish off the exercise. And every time I go back I can really feel how I stretch out that hip flexor and I really push that stride length. On the tenth exercise, I go up and down. I slightly touch the outside of my legs. So I slightly touch the outside of my legs and I slightly touch the shoulders. And as always with these exercises, I'm trying to take as big steps as I can. I try to be as controlled as I can with the motions. And I try to walk in towards on the line. In the last exercise, I just swim my arms in big movements, front and back, and try to maintain as stable as I can in my upper body and really push that stride length. And I try to really drive my arms back. I extend my leg in front of me, feel that contact with the heel touching the ground and then dragging my leg through until toe off. Thanks for watching. 
I hope you liked the video and please like, subscribe and I'll see you at the next one.